we often apply a large force to a system during a very short period of time. You can think, for example, of pushing a swing. Most of the time you can just let the swing go, but every now and then you give a big push. With these pushes you basically add momentum to the system, you add a certain impulse. This actually happens quite in quite a lot of systems, and these impulses can be modeled using a so-called delta function. What is this delta function? Um, what are its properties? That is what you will learn in this video. First we'll see why this is called an impulse from a physical viewpoint. So if you don't like physics, just skip ahead one minute. So, for example, you can think of a mass spring system, which can be modeled as my double plus cy prime plus k times y equals some force f of t. Now suppose these contributions c of y prime and k of y are negligible. So if you have a very large force f in a very short period of time, so if this force dominates the motion for this very short period of time, then you can write this force as the ddt of m y prime, y prime equals v, so the ddt of m times v. Uh, m times v is the, uh, the linear momentum, so you get dp dt. So what's happening is force equals the, the change in momentum. So if you integrate your force, you get the delta p, p the change in momentum, is the integral over f. And I put here as boundaries minus infinity up to plus infinity. That doesn't really matter because this force is zero most of the time. So you could also put like uh, minus epsilon to plus epsilon, something like that if you add it at t equals zero. But since it's zero anywhere, everywhere else, you can put the boundaries up to infinity also. So that is what this uh, capital F of t does. Its integral adds a certain momentum. That's it, that is why it's called an impulse function. Now let's move on to the mathematics. So if you uh, didn't like the physics, you can wake up again. So what is a unit impulse in a short period of time? We introduce the function d tall of t, where tall is a constant. Well, the idea is that it's zero everywhere except between minus tall and plus tall, and that's constant, and a constant such that the total area under the curve is one. So for example, here we have the green one, uh, where the constant tall is chosen as tall one. So the function is non-zero between minus tall one and plus tall one. The height is one of a two tall one, such that the area in green un under there equals one. Or we can choose a smaller tall, a tall two. So what happens, the whole thing gets smaller, but also higher, because you want to keep the same area. And we can choose the tall even smaller, tall 3. Uh, again, we get higher and smaller. Now, what is this uh, delta function? What you basically do is you say your tall is very, very small. So if you want to give a unit impulse at t equals 0, you basically take tall to 0. And what we do then is we say, okay, that will become our delta function delta of t equals limit tall to 0 d tall of t. I didn't put an equality here, because what's happening here is a bit tricky, uh, strictly mathematically speaking. Because what you're doing, you take your tall smaller and smaller, your peak higher and higher and higher. And if you take tall smaller and smaller and smaller, what basically happens is that your uh, delta of tall is zero everywhere, exact, except for t equals zero. And at t equals zero, you are infinity, basically. It's a delta function, it's a function which is zero everywhere except at zero where you are infinity. So it's not a real function anymore. That's why I put the quotes here. It's something more general. Well, we don't worry too much about that, we'll just do our computations. And of course, two integral is still one, because that was the construction. Now we're going to do it slightly more general. So impulse, unit impulse at t equals zero is delta of t. Now, if you do not want to put the impulse at t equals zero, but for example, at t equals t zero, 
So what do we do in that case? Then we use our delta at t minus t0. We do exactly the same. We take the limit tall to zero of delta tall, but then not at zero, centered at zero, but at t minus t0. And then similarly, our delta function is zero everywhere, except for t equals t0, and that's infinite. And again, the integral is still one. So that is how a delta function works. And that is why it's called an impulse function, because it gives a unit impulse at t equals t0.